Now let's talk about heat engine, which is a very important component when we start talking about the second law of thermodynamics. So a heat engine schematic looks like this. Okay, so this is a heat engine. Now what is a heat engine? Heat engine is basically a device. It's a device, okay, which exchanges heat between two temperature reservoirs. So these are two temperature reservoirs, TH and TL. So where we assume that TH is always higher as compared to TL. So because this temperature is higher, the spontaneous flow of heat is always from a high temperature to a low temperature. So your heat will start flowing from this to this. Okay. So the uh, reservoir from which the heat starts to flow is also called the heat source. And this is where you are rejecting your heat. So this becomes your heat sink. Okay. Now, from heat source, this heat engine, you know, absorbs some energy in the form of heat. It utilizes some form of, uh, some amount of that heat energy and gives out some work output. And whatever, uh, you know, part is left, which is not converted into work output is thrown out in the heat sink. Okay. So this is a very, very simplistic schematic of a, of, of a heat engine. Okay. So if you talk about QH, this is the heat absorbed, heat absorbed from heat source. Okay. QL is the heat rejected from heat sink. Okay. Now work out, this is the work output. So if you get the relationship between these three quantities, QH, QL and W out, look at this. This is the system that we will be discussing about. So this is the system. Okay. You have something coming into the system. So this is input to the system. And there are two things which are going out. This is going out and this is going out. So to maintain the energy balance of this system, the input energy should be equal to the uh, outgoing energy. So you will be equating QH is equal to W out plus QL. So input energy is always higher as compared to the output work. Okay. You can never have QL to be zero. That's a separate topic we will be discussing about. Okay. So now this gives rise to the heat engine efficiency and that is eta and this is eta he which denotes the heat engine efficiency. Now efficiency is basically output upon input. Okay. Now output in this case is W out. Okay. And input in this case is the heat input from TH, so QH. So if you replace the value of W out, so W out from this equation becomes QH minus QL. So you put it there, so it becomes QH minus QL upon QH. Okay. So this gives rise to 1 minus QL upon QH. Okay. So this is the mathematical relation for the efficiency of a heat engine. Now it, it, it clearly shows that the efficiency of the heat engine is always less than 1 because you are subtracting some fraction from unity. Okay, so this entire value will be less than 1. Okay, now to make it equal to 1 that is 100% efficiency, you would have to reduce QL. Either you reduce QL or you know reduce it to 0 which is not possible at all. You can only possibly increase QH. Okay, so by increasing QH, then only you can increase your efficiency which is close to 100%. To make it exactly equal to 100%, you will have to reduce QL to 0 which is not possible at all because there are two things. Nothing in this world is you know efficient 100%. Secondly, this is heat and heat is a low grade energy. Okay, so this low grade energy cannot fully convert into 
a high grade energy so this is also one of the limitations okay so this is a brief introduction on the topic of heat engine i hope you understood this now let's move forward from heat engine and talk about a heat pump and a refrigerator